Well, hey everyone, and happy Resurrection Weekend from all of us here at Church of the King. We're so glad that you're joining us for Easter services here at Church of the King this weekend. My name is Simon, and I have the privilege of serving as the online campus pastor here at Church of the King. This is my beautiful wife, Rebecca, and we're just honored that you're spending some time with us this Easter weekend here at church with us. Yes, and from our family to yours, happy Easter. We are again just so honored that you would spend this time with us. And we are a family, so we just want to say welcome home. That's so true, and what a special time to really be gathering with Christians from around the globe to celebrate the greatest thing that's ever happened, and that is the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's what we're celebrating this Easter weekend. And I know that we have people that join us online from people from all around the world. And so we wanna know, where are you joining us from? In fact, right now, why don't you take a second, just type it in the chat room if you're watching it live. Happy Easter from blank. Let us know where you're joining us from. We would love to hear from you. Yes, and Easter is such a great time to invite someone to church. Maybe someone who has never watched or attended church before, this is the time to invite them because we know that Pastor Steve is going to bring a clear gospel message all about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. And we know that that act is something that can change someone's life yes. forever, for eternity. And so what a time to invite someone to church. So let's take a moment right now to click that share or invite button and invite someone along to hear this weekend's message. Yeah, it's going to be really good. And like always, this weekend really is no different in that we're going to go into a time of worship here in just a little bit. Maybe you're new to an experience like this. Worship is really just a time for us to say thank you to Jesus for what he's done for us. And as we're thinking about the cross and the resurrection of Christ, we have so much that we can be thankful for. You know, the Bible says that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. And that's worthy to say thank you to him for. And so I just encourage you, as we go into this time of worship, you could even stand up, raise your hands, really worship with us. And let's give thanks to Jesus for who he is and for what he's done. So enjoy this time of worship, and then we'll be right back. In the still twilight of an ancient garden, where the scent of olives lingered, a savior knelt in solitude, embracing the impending shadows of destiny. Judas, once a friend but now a betrayer, sealed the fate with a kiss, as silver exchanged hands marking the beginning of the end. Up the rugged path of Calvary, a procession of agony unfolded. Each step laden with the weight of humanity's transgressions led to the hill of Calvary. Nails pierced flesh, and a humble cry echoed through the darkened sky. In that solemn moment, the Lamb of God bore the sins of the world a crimson robe draped in humility. A shroud of silence enveloped the earth. The weight of despair hung in the air as creation itself seemed to hold its breath. Then, as dawn painted the horizon with hues of hope, the stone rolled away, revealing an empty tomb and death was defeated by life's triumphant emergence. The risen Christ, a beacon of resurrection, defying the finality of the grave in his victory, a bridge, a bridge was built connecting humanity to the divine, offering redemption and grace. As Easter's light dispels the shadows, let the praises of creation ring. For in the crucifixion's shadow, the risen King stands as a testament to eternal love and boundless grace, overcoming death and defeating the grave. 
But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. the world and all across this room let's sing out make a joyful noise come on we remember remember those walls that we called sin and shame they were like prisons that we couldn't escape but he came and he died and he rose those walls are rubble now yes they are We call death and grave They were like mountains that stood in our way But he came and he died and he rose And those giants are dead now Yes they are, we say And this is our God, this is who he is He loves us And this is our God, this is what he does Shipping together. Let's just go ahead and open up our hearts in this moment. i 
Come on, church, you got one more song. We're gonna celebrate what the Lord has done for us and we're gonna praise and lift his name. Come on, we sing together. You gave your life for mine. Nailed to the cross, you crucified. All of my sin and shame, it was washed by your mercy. We said, you are the treasure I find, my reason for living, so let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy. And all praise to the Lord most high, and all praise to the one
Wow, what an amazing time of worship together with our church family this weekend. And this really is a special time. It's a holy moment of coming together to lift up the name of Jesus, like we do every week. But this weekend is special because we're lifting up the name of Jesus. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus here at church on Easter weekend. And we're so glad that you're with us, joining us today. If you just came in during worship, we want to say welcome to you. Welcome to Easter at Church of the King. My name is Simon, and I have the privilege of serving as the online campus pastor here at church. And this is my beautiful wife, Rebecca, and it's so nice to have you with us. It's nice to meet you if it's your first time, and it's nice to have you back here with us. We're just glad that you're here with us. Yes, we are so glad that you are here joining us for Easter weekend. And if it is your first time, or if you've been joining us for a while, we just want to say welcome home to our church family. And hey, if that's you, if it is your first time, we have something special for you. We have an, a little gift since it's Easter that we would love to get to you. But not just that, we would love to get to know you a bit better and hear your story and maybe even pray for you. And so the easiest way for us to be able to do that if, is if you fill out a short form that's in the chat room right now, or you can simply text the word CONNECT to 822-822 and it allows us to follow up with you and just get to know you a bit better and hear from you and get you that small gift as well. That's right, that's right. <laughs> really looking forward to connecting with you this upcoming week. And speaking of gifts, we have something special. We have a special treat for us coming up next weekend here at church. We have some special guest speakers as well. Yes, Jimmy and Irene Rollins are joining us and they are going to be speaking to our church. And we are just so honored that this powerful couple is joining us next weekend. And Simon and I actually had the privilege of attending a marriage retreat last year where they were the speakers. And we can just say that we walked away feeling encouraged, equipped, and blessed, not just as individuals, but as a married couple. And so we know that this message is going to bless you and encourage you. So we can't can't wait to see you back next weekend for that. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see you back at church next weekend. Before we go on with the rest of the service and really hear from Pastor Steve, our senior pastor here in just a little bit, we always want to take a second to just say thank you so much for your generosity, Church of the King. And especially if Church of the King is your home church, thank you for faithful giving of the tithe. And, and for those of you that give over and above that to offerings, what we call at Church of the King, Kingdom Builders. Thank you so much for investing in eternity and really believing in what God is doing here at our church. And as you're giving this weekend, we're going to put some easy ways to give on the screen right now to make it super simple for you. And again, thank you so much. And with that, we're about to hear from Pastor Steve, but we have one more song of worship. So let's engage with this song of worship, and then we're going to hear from our senior pastor, Pastor Steve. See you soon. My name is Bridget Weaver. My life when I was uh, younger, growing up, was I mean, it was a, a good life. We were a upper middle class family. I um, I can't complain that much. I did um, a lot of partying, you know, college, drinking and bars and that whole thing. I did notice early on I, I overdid it because there was just always something more that I needed, you know, that something was missing inside of me. I was living a life of absolute um, torture, I'd say. Um, it, for probably about 10 years, I was in and out of um, jail, um, battling addiction, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. My family, because of all the guilt and knowing how much pain I was causing them, there was a time I thought that they'd never want to have anything to do with me again. And um, uh, I just kept going down the wrong path. So like I said, they eventually got to a point where I I didn't, uh, I had no contact with them. They, they cut me off. There came a point where I had had enough. I was beaten down and um, I always believed in a God. I was just turning my back on him and didn't want him to see what I was doing, you know, with my guilt and shame. I didn't want to, um, I didn't think I was savable. Let's stand and sing this together. I can't. 
cross my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone We sing no praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. And on the third we sing. When I got out, I um, found myself in a bad situation because I had no friends or family left. And I just felt like even though I had gotten rid of the drug use and all that kind of stuff, there was still a little something missing. And I was like, this is not what I want. I'm going to, this is, I don't know what else to do, you know. So I cried out, prayed. One day, I, would, um, I was at the lakefront, and um, it dawned on me to um, look up Church of the King and its services, and it happened to be like 9.15, and um, I was like, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going, I feel like I need more in my life. I um, sped on down here, and I was about five minutes late, and I walked in by myself, and they were singing um, Same God, and I was just, I just kind of melted, you know? Um, the next step for me was um, involving my um, family. We started coming to church together, my, my sister, my daughter and my son, we would come together. At one point in my life, I thought um, I would never have a relationship with my family and my children like I do now. Since then, I, I've gotten a new job. I've moved into my own apartment, and we um, started a small group we do on Wednesdays with um, my sister. <laughs> and um, I just can't express enough how, how, how wonderful it's been in the past two years of my life. I didn't think it was ever possible. It, for the longest time, it was so hard for me to wrap my head around the concept of Jesus actually dying for my sins and knowing that he loved me no matter what. All the guilt and the shame and the negativity that I'd lived with for so long. 
I felt like a dead woman walking at one point in my life. Now I have been totally redeemed, uh, resurrected in Christ um, in a way I never thought imaginable. Death could not hold the veil tore before you silence the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roar, praise of your glory for you are raised to life again. And death could not I want to welcome all of our locations, those that are joining us online to Easter weekend at Church of the King. Come on, can we just welcome all those that are joining us? Man, we're so excited to have all of you with us. I know we have a lot of guests this weekend. I want to introduce myself. I have the privilege of uh, serving as a senior pastor at Church of the King. My name is Steve Robinson, and it's a joy and an honor. Matter of fact, I'm always looking forward to this, this moment each year. We, we know we have a lot of people in and out of town, and so if you're a guest here, we personally, I want to just personally welcome you to church. You know, it's interesting when you think about Easter, Resurrection Day. They're, they're, uh, to resurrect means that, that, that someone or something was dead and it came back to life. I think that we often forget sometimes that the resurrection, there, there is no resurrection without death. In other words, there's no Sunday without Friday. And it's interesting when you think about Christianity. I know a lot of people don't like talking about this. You know, when you talk about the concept of blood, it's like, oh, now I, I'm a hunter, so I don't mind animal blood, but I just get freaked out with human blood. I just don't like it. I don't like it on me. I don't like seeing it. Matter of fact, a number of years ago, my, my boys and I, we were at my pastor, Pastor Jacob Aranza's house in Lafayette. They've got some boys similar age. And so my, my son, I had a 12 year old and 13 at the time. And uh, they're older now, and so they did this game, like boys do, right? 
and they've got these glasses, kind of like goblets are like, you know, like, hey, let's see who can squeeze it and see if it breaks. Boy, that's wisdom. So they're squeezing it. Sure enough, my son won. Not really, but he won kind of. He broke the glass. Well, he breaks the glass. Next thing you know, I kind of hear a, a, a yell, and I literally, literally, I go in there, and he, 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 he cuts a small artery, and blood just shooting across the room. Now, I don't like blood. I already told you that, right? So the pastor's wife, my pastor's wife, Michelle, she kind of starts freaking a little bit. She goes, she's going to put a little thing to stop the blood on him, and the next thing you know, she sees I'm about to pass out. She starts fanning me. As a matter of fact, we get to the hospital, and the nurses are not sure who's worse off. Is it my son or is it me? By the way, I found this picture this week. Can you pull that picture up? This is my son 13 years ago, and uh, there, uh, the good news is, is he's, he made it, okay? That, that's good news, and so we're excited about that. I don't like anything to do with blood, human blood. And yet, there was a lot of it that was shed the day that Jesus died. You know, we, we've been in a series, actually, at Church of the King. I don't know if you guys know this, particularly the guests, if you're here for this weekend. We, we've actually been in a series during Lent, and the series that we've been teaching through is actually the last sayings of Jesus. So when Jesus is on the cross, there's actually seven sayings, statements he made from the cross. Like, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he looks at John, behold your mother. He looks at John, you know, and looks at his mother, behold your son. And so so we, we've been teaching through these. I, I want you to open up to the Gospel of John, chapter 19. I want to look at one more because there is no resurrection without the cross. John, John chapter 19, I want to look at literally the last statement that Jesus made from the cross. John chapter 19, verse 30. Here, here's what the Bible says. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, here it is. He said, it is, come on, can you say it? Finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Now in the Greek, the New Testament, the Bible's written Old Testament, Hebrew, New Testament, Greek. The Greek New Testament word, we have three words in English, it is finished. The Greek word is tetelestai. And the word tetelestai, it actually is a, it's a, a business term in the first century. It's a, they would have documents. And so like if you had a debt and, and the debt was paid off in a business sense, they would actually stamp it to Telestai. That, that's what they would do. And it was, it was, now you guys have heard this before, uh, loan forgiveness. Think about the word forgiveness. You ever thought about that before? What is that? It's paid off. To Telestai means it is finished. The debt has been paid. Listen, you don't owe anything. As a business owner, man, you, I mean, can you imagine those of you that own a business and you have some business debt? Could you imagine if somebody walked in there and said, I'm going to pay off your business debt. I mean, you just jump up, hug them. I mean, you do whatever, right? Rub their head. What do you do? A lot of things. Depends on how much you owe. But if somebody pays off your debt and you have nothing to do with it, I mean, listen, the heart is filled with gratitude. Can you imagine? All of creation. Boom, to Telestai. The question is, what was finished? What was finished was our salvation was purchased. Our salvation, or you can say it this way, was procured. In other words, it now be, what we didn't earn now becomes ours. Pastor, why, why, is, why would Jesus do that? Because you're valuable. You're of infinite value. And because you're valuable, how I many you know Jesus paid with his blood? How I many you know Jesus didn't buy junk. He bought the human race, valuable to him. You know, when you think about the concept of value, I, I was thinking this week about value. I did hear something funny about it. A boy asked his country father, he said, Daddy, how much did it cost for my older sister Susie to get married? The father paused and replied, I really don't know, son. I'm still paying for it. Come on, dad. How many don't I tell? By the way, my, dog got, my daughter got married this summer, and I want to say, Save up your money. All right, let's go to the next point here. So at the cross, it was finished. You know, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock noon, darkness. The Bible says darkness covered the earth. And then 3 o'clock, boom, there's those last words. It is finished. And then he gave up his spirit. Our salvation, boom, was paid for. 
So that's Friday. That's day one. Then Saturday, that's day two. Then Sunday morning, that's day three. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, again, there is no resurrection without the cross. Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says, listen to what it says, verse one, now after the Sabbath, that's Saturday, day one is Friday. Everybody say day one is Friday. Everybody say day two is Saturday. So in the Jewish life, Sabbath, that's Saturday. The day after Saturday, that's Sunday, right? So that's the third day. Now after the Sabbath, or after Saturday, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, And the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the tomb and sat on it. I guess he was tired. Okay, that was funny. But anyway, so the guy sat on it and his countenance was like lightning. And the Bible says, and his clothing was white as snow. You guys ever hear this? You, You guys have heard this before. You know, when people said, man, I wish I could see an angel. By the way, I don't think that we should ever pray to see an angel. We, we, do, we do believe in angels. The Bible, if you're somebody that's, you know, not familiar with biblical themes, like we really believe in angels. The Bible tells, we believe in heavenly messengers. We believe in demons the Bible, that's in the Bible. We believe it's a real heaven, a real hell, a real God, a real devil. God is the creator. The devil's the creation. So, so like we really believe the Bible at Church of the King. And there really are angelic beings. And the Bible says they've been sent out to minister to the heirs of salvation. There's times when you entertain, the Bible says you entertain angels even unaware. They do the Lord's bidding in the earth. Well, here it is, they move a stone and they sit down on the stone. Now, the scripture goes on, there are two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And, and what do they do? They, they walk up, look at verse five. But the angel answered and said to the women. So the guys shake, by the way, you ever thought of this before? Why did they have to have guards guarding the tomb of Jesus? Remember, it was Joseph's tomb, a rich man. He gave of his tomb to, for, for the body of Jesus. Why, why, why did they have to guard the tomb? I'll tell you why they had to guard it. Because the Pharisees knew, the religious leaders knew. They had this little concept floating around about the resurrection. And the last thing that they wanted was the followers of Jesus to go steal that body and to declare, aha, he's been raised from the dead. So they were guarding big time. Well, the angel of the Lord came, shook those guys. I mean, look, they fall down. The two women are standing up. And the angel says to the women, here it is, look at this, verse five. He says, but the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified, but he's not here, for he is risen. Everybody say, he is risen. He is risen as he said. Now, here it is, here it is. Come see the place where the Lord lay. The angel of the Lord came and moved that big stone not to let Jesus out. I don't know if you realize that. How do I know that? John chapter 20, Jesus walked through the wall, the wall in Jerusalem. So so the stone was not removed so that, come on, Jesus, wait, time out, don't do anything, Jesus, we need some angels. No, that's not why. The stone was not removed to let Jesus out. He walks through walls with a resurrected body. The stone was removed not for Jesus to get out, but for us to go in. The girl, the ladies, listen. He said, come on in. Here it is, here it is. I want you to come on in. It's so important that you come on in. In other words, come and see. Everyone say, come and see. By the way, that's biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity is not going do. It's actually come and see, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and experience Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. In other words, it's it's come and see, come and experience, come and taste of the Lord. Wow. And they walk into the tomb. So so here's what I want to do today in my time. I want to give you three reasons why I believe, watch this, the angel of the Lord said, come on in and see. I, I believe it's an invitation to all of us. All of our locations, wherever you are, those that are online, I believe the Lord is giving us an invitation into the tomb to see something. Number one, the first thing that I believe the Lord wants us to see is that Jesus really is alive. He's not there. 
Look at verse six. He is not here. In other words, they get in there and they're like, wait a minute. We saw them put the body of Jesus in there. Remember, they were at the cross. They knew that Joseph gave the two. Wait, wait, time out. Where's, where's the body of Jesus? They saw the guards that have been fallen to the ground. The angel rolls a stone and boom, they're able to come in. And where is the body of Jesus? The resurrection. Wait a minute, this is real. He really was resurrected from the dead. It's interesting if you debunk the resurrection, you actually unwind the Christian faith. Some people who set down the path to debunk the resurrection actually end up putting their faith in Christ. You know, there's famous atheists. They set out to kind of disprove Christianity. One of the areas that they really want to attack often is, is the resurrection. There's a man named Lee Strobel. I'll give you his last name. You can look it up afterwards. Uh, he's actually, this is interesting, a journalist and a lawyer. What a combination. And his wife gets saved. He's so infuriated because he's an intellectual. He's like, that's, that's like fairy tale stuff that he literally threatens to divorce his wife. So instead of doing that, he says he sets out on a quest to disprove Christianity and to attack the resurrection. Listen to what he says. He said, I did that for a year and nine months, this inquiry, until November 8th, 1991. And on that day, I realized that in light of the torrent of evidence flowing in the direction of the truth of Christianity, it would require more faith for me to maintain my atheism than to become a Christian. On that day, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord, Savior, and leader. How many are grateful that Jesus still changes people's lives? <laughs> By the way, there are many famous atheists that set out to disprove Christianity. C.S. Lewis is one of them. Remember Chronicles of Narnia? Here's another one. Josh McDowell, who's a friend of mine. Josh set out. By the way, if you're an atheist or a skeptic, by the way, I know there's people that have come to our church. We're honored that you're here. I want to lovingly challenge you. Please read the Bible to set out to disprove Christianity and watch what God does in your heart. Every one of them, it sets out because the Bible is alive, it's the breath of God, and it transforms people. Number one, why did the angel of the Lord tell the ladies, come on in? Number one, he wanted them to see there's no Jesus left in this tomb. You know, it's interesting. I'll say this one other thing about this. There was a magazine. Some of you are old enough to remember this, Time Magazine, but in 1966, up to that point, the Time Magazine cover was always a picture. First time there was not a picture on the front of Time Magazine. And, and literally, it was April 6th, okay, April 6th, 48, or, or 58 years ago, 1966. Uh, look, look at the cover. This is the literal cover. Uh, and there it was. It rocked America. America was in a cultural revolution. There was so much going on. The Vietnam War, a lot of unheaval, unrest. And, and this was interesting because, because there was not just philosophers, secular philosophers, but actually theologians that were posing this question. Can Christianity, watch this, this is important, can religion make it without God? Is God dead? Think of that. Is God even central to this whole thing? They were proposing that if mankind got better and better and better and the beauty and the love of the world, that somehow is it possible for the world to get better without God? Is God dead? Well, I'd like to announce that nearly 60 years later, one billion plus people and growing, the church of Jesus Christ is alive because Jesus is alive, living in them by his spirit. It's growing. It didn't go away. There'll be churches all over the world packed Easter weekend. Why? Because people have come to worship the Lord. Why did he tell them to come? To show them Jesus is not there anymore. We serve a resurrected Christ. Number two, the second thing is he wanted them to know what God had done for them. Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. Come and see. Come and see. The Lord's telling us that today. I want you to come and see. What? The place where the Lord lay. Why is this significant? It's the word play here. This is important. And I want to clear up any misconceptions we have about Christianity. Christianity is a come and see. It's not a go and do religion. Now, we do good works as Christians, but we don't do good works to be right with God. We do good works because we're right with God. 
Religion, this is very important. Because some of you guys, you, you've been thinking, if I'll just do enough good works, help enough poor people. Do, listen, we do help poor people, not to get right with God. It's because we're right with God. We want to help poor people. It, you, don't, you don't do good works. Christianity is not go and do, it's come and see. But when you come and see and taste of the Lord and get saved, then you want to go and do so other people can taste. It's so important that you understand that. I want to clear up confusion. Whatever location you're at, in any of our campuses, it's important. Because biblical Christianity, you come and receive Christ. You come and experience Christ. You come and, you, that's what he was telling the ladies. Come and see, guys. Come and see. Then when you're transformed, you go and do. You go share the message. Christianity is not a turn over a new leaf religion. Ah, I gotta just turn over a new leaf. This year I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna try harder. You ever talk to somebody about that? I just think I just got to turn over a new leaf. You've turned over more new. You've turned over more leaves than they have outside of a mansion. You've turned over because because Christianity is not changing yourself. It's submitting to the one who has power to change you. It's 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 Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's it's God doing for you what you can't do for yourself. The book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty-six, verse twenty-six. One of my favorite scriptures. The Bible says, I will give you a new heart. I love this. I will give you a new heart, and I'll put a new spirit in you. And I'll remove from your heart the heart of stone, and I will give you the heart of flesh. In other words, I will put my spirit in you, and I will move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my, my, my laws. Now, now, why is this important? The ladies didn't move the stone. God's angels did. Can I tell you something? There are some of you that are facing things in your life you can't move in your own strength. There's obstacles. There's challenges. There's, there's impediments. There's insurmountable things. It's like, I can, but here's what grace does. Grace moves the stone. Grace breaks the chain. Grace does for you what you can't do for yourself. That's what God does. Christianity is not a self-help religion. It's a surrender to the one who can only do for me what I can't do for myself. Some of you guys, you've got some stones that are real big. And God comes and God moves it. And God does the miracle. The whole thing is miraculous. By the way, that's what happened to Bridget. Bridget couldn't change herself. She kept going through this and that and this and that. And, and, and finally, she surrenders to Christ. And Christ comes. He breaks the change. He fills the void. Some of you have a void in your heart. God wants to fill that void with, and put a new spirit in the inside of you and fill you with joy and peace and significance and meaning. I, I, I gave my heart to Christ when I was, right when I turned 19, I was a freshman at Tulane University. Some of you have heard the story. I was invited to a Bible study by two girls. How many know God knows what he's doing? Literally, and, and there's two girls. I had guys invite me, I ain't doing these two girls invite me. And one of them was real bold. Here's what she said. She goes, if you don't come, she goes, we're gonna go pick you up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, so. And I remember I walked into this Bible study and, you know, all these Jesus people, you know, and the devil lies. He goes, these are weird people, freaky people, you know, and they're just kind of, hey, brother. I didn't get the brother thing at first. It's growing on me. But anyway, so they're all just kind of there. And then at the end, the Bible study leader, he goes, does anybody want to see, receive Jesus? Some of you may have heard this before. I had two lies in my mind. By the way, this, the same devil that whispers and whispered to me is the same devil that whispers to people today. Here, the, here it is. Here it is. See, I grew up in church. My mom made me go to church, but I wasn't a Christian. So I knew the truth. I just rejected the truth. And I lived a very sinful life. And so I'm in college, and the Lord's drawing me. And I said this. I remember thinking this thought. God, I've done too many sins. I've sinned too much that you can't forgive me. I, I've got a word of encouragement for somebody. No one has committed too many sins. I don't care how bad you think they are. I don't care what people think they are. No sin is too great that the blood of Jesus can't forgive and cleanse. How many of y'all are grateful for the power of the blood of Christ? That's good news. That's good news. So that was lie number one. Here's lie number two. You ready? Here's lie number two. Well, man, I, I, um, I gotta go. Here's what I got. I'm gonna go home and clean up my life. Then I'm gonna come to God. Can I help you? You don't clean up and then come to God. You come to God and he cleans you up. If you could clean up before God, then you wouldn't need a savior. You come to God with all your good, all your bad. He saves you. He puts a new heart in you. He transforms you. Just like Bridget, just like me. 
Why did they say come and see? Number one, to show Jesus is not there. We don't serve a dead God, but a live God. Number two, to show you all that God has done in your life. He wants to give you a new heart, and it's grace that does it. God moves the stone that you can't move. And he puts a, he puts a heart of flesh, and he puts his spirit on the inside of you. Let me give you the third and final thing. Why does he say come and see? I'll tell you why. This is big. Because when they went in and saw, they realized, they realized something. That Jesus was alive. And, and, and that Jesus is in the business of changing people's lives. And Jesus is in the business of, uh, of taking dead things and dead people and dead dreams and dead whatever and making them come alive. In other words, in other words, in other words, let, let me say it this way. Jesus wants to give you a new identity. There's a lot of discussion in our culture about identity. What do you identify as a dog, a frog, whatever? But let me tell you what, if you're a Christian, you should identify as. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, everybody say, in Christ. That, there's your identification. Do you identify in Christ? Have you received Christ? Are you in Christ? If you are, here's your new identity. I don't care what you were. Here's who you are now. It is, listen, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So your identity, your new identity, this is, listen, as a child of God, you identify as a blood-bought, blood-washed, new creation child of God. That's who you are. That's a new thing. That's a powerful thing. By the way, by the way, it's not a renovated house. It's called new construction. How many of y'all are grateful that God has done something new in our hearts? Come on, by the power of his spirit. This is good news. And by the way, I think this is a word for somebody, maybe a couple people. You are not the sum total of your past mistakes. The devil would like to lie to you that you're the sum total, and boy, he just reminds you over, no, no. Old things have passed away. Everyone say, old things have passed away. I'm not who I used to be. I'm a new person in Christ. You're not who you used to be if you identify with Christ. You're a new person in Christ. Okay, so here it is. This is so powerful. The Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of God comes into the body of Jesus. Literally, into the body. The body of Jesus wakes up, resurrected. To be resurrected, it means you are alive, you died, now you come back to life. The Spirit of God comes into the body of Jesus, watch this, resurrects him, and brings him to life. Do you know what Paul said? Paul said this in Romans chapter 8. Here's what he said. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. If you're a Christian, if you identify with Christ, guess what? That same Spirit. Everyone say same Spirit. Oh, man, you got to get this. you got to get this. The cross forgives you of your sin, but it's the resurrection that gives you power to live the Christian life. you, you got to see this. Everybody say the same Spirit. Oh man, this is good. Watch it. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. The same spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give, the same spirit will give life to your mortal body. Living within you. That's why that addiction can break. That's why that despondency must go. That's why that hopelessness must go. That's why that fear. How I many you know when the spirit of God's in your body, it drives out all fear. It drives out all worry. It drives out. Look, why? Because the spirit of your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Why is it important for those women to come see? Mary Magdalene, the other Mary. Why? Why? Number one, I'll tell you why. The angel of the Lord said, he's not here. He's alive. Number two, look what God has done. God moved the stone. The thing that you couldn't move, God moved it. You have bondages, some of you in your life, you can't break it, you've tried. Only God can do it. That's why you gotta receive and trust Him. Number three, it's you gotta see, He wants to make you a new person. You have a new identity. Do you identify as a Christian? Blood washed, blood bought, resurrected by the Spirit of God on the inside of you. From death to life.
You guys may not know this, some people in the church do, but 10 years ago, about eight years ago, the day before Good Friday, I, um, I was working out and I, I was on a machine and the machine, it was like a chess machine, and the machine broke and the, the little, there's a lever pulley type thing behind it, the metal bar came and boom, hit me on the back of the head. Day before, good, this would have been on Thursday, the day before Good Friday. And I just, I was like, oh gosh. And I got a little dizzy, a little confused. I was just a little cloudy. I remember calling Pastor Randy at our Little Creek campus. I said, I was driving home. I said, man, I got to go get my head checked out, which I did. I said, I said, I think I, and I got had a concussion. I, and I was kind of foggy. If you ever had a concussion, just kind of foggy and just, it's not too clear. And, you know, there's some people knocked out. I wasn't like knocked out, but it was, it was hazy. And I remember them praying for me. I thought, man, I got to preach tomorrow. You know, so I got all these services, you know, and, you know, and I don't, you know, so I'm like, Lord, I just, and they're praying for me, you know. And, and what was so interesting, within about a 24-hour period, it's like there was this sheen or this cloudiness, this lack of clarity in my life. It just, it was just a little confusing, just a little. But within about a 24-hour period of time, literally, it's like where it was cloudy, it cleared up. Where there was a little bit of confusion, I had clarity of thought. Do you know the word risen means, literally? It's almost like come back to your senses, come up higher. You're risen up. In other words, what you were, it went away, but then you're coming back. In other words, what was cloudy now becomes clear. Do you know people without Christ, life is cloudy to them. It's like they don't get it. The cross, the blood, church, I'm not sure. Where am I going? Who cares? Just get enough toys. Hold on to them. Try to make it to the end. But when you get saved and you give your heart to Jesus, the clouds lift. It's like you see your purpose. You see God. You see yourself. You see your destiny. These ladies saw it. Bridget saw it. I saw it. I see it. And you can see it. Come and see, Jesus says. So here's my question. Where are you in your walk with God? Maybe you're a seeker here. Maybe you're a skeptic. Maybe, you, maybe once or twice a year you go to church. I, I don't know, but I know one thing. God loves you. And for whatever reason, God brought you here because he wants to know you. And he wants you to know him. He wants to have a relationship with you. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask everybody to bow their heads. Every one of our locations, those that are joining us online, this is a very important part of our service each week. If you do not know Jesus, if you, you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you can today. Here's what the Bible says. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I can't save you. Church of the King can't save you. I tell you, Ken, his name is Jesus, and he loves you. And he cares about you. He's not mad at you. But you've got to yield your heart to him. Surrender. Well, pastor, what do I have to believe? Number one, Romans 3.23 says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, we need a savior because we have a sin problem. Can you admit that? Can you, can you just admit, man, I've blown it at times. I've sinned. I realize there's a separation between me and God. So once you acknowledge that you've sinned, then Romans 6.23 says the payment for your sin is death. Christ died in your place. So when you receive Christ, here it is, to tell us die. Now, watch this, watch this. Your debt's paid in full. And you're forgiven of your sin. Oh, yeah. And you're given the gift of the Holy Spirit to live the Christian life. So my question is, are you at peace with God? If you die today, do you know that you know that you're ready to stand before God? With everybody's head bowed and eyes closed, and those that are joining us online, in just a moment, you're going to let your host know what God is doing in your heart. If you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Christ. I need the blood of Jesus to wash me, to cleanse me, and to make me new. If that's you at the count of three, I'm just going to ask for a show of hands. Pastor, pray for me. I need Christ. If that's you, just put your hands up high at the count of three. One, two, three. Quickly, put your hand up high so I can see it. Pastor, pray for me. I need Christ. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am, right there. Anybody else? Pastor, God bless you, ma'am. Anybody else? Pastor Steve, pray for me. God bless you right there. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you, ma'am. Jesus loves you and he cares about you. He brought you here. Anybody else, pastor, pray for me. I need Christ. <clears throat> I'm not sure about my relationship with God. Church, can we pray with those that are trusting Christ? This is a very important moment in our service. Matter of fact, why don't we pray with all those that are making a decision to follow Christ? Let's pray together with them. Can we do that? Everybody say, dear Jesus, I come to you today, a sinner in need of a savior. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. 
I let go of my past, and I turn to you. I turn to the cross. Say, Jesus, wash me with your blood. Give me a new heart, a new life, a new reason to live. I want you to say this. Say, Jesus, I take my life, and I put it in your hands. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the sealing work of the Holy Spirit and the word of the living God taking root deep in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name. Wow, what an amazing time together with you, our church family, this weekend for Easter at Church of the King. We're so glad that you decided to take some time to join us for our Easter service this weekend. Now, I do you want to take a second right now to acknowledge those of you who may be making a decision right now in this moment to give your life to Jesus, maybe for the very first time or to recommit your life to Christ. If that is you, we just want to say from our hearts to yours, congratulations. We believe that's the best decision that you could ever make. And you know, the Bible says that the old has gone and the new has come. You're a new creation. What that means is that you can leave any things in the past of shame and guilt and mistakes that you've made really leave them in the past because your new life with Jesus begins today. And we couldn't be more excited for you. And we can't wait as a church to just walk out this journey of following Jesus with you. Yes, and like Simon said, as a church, we would love to walk out this journey with you. So if you are making that decision to follow Jesus today, what you can do is simply text the word decision to the numbers 822-822, and that allows us to just resource you, to send some things your way, to just help you as you continue to do just that, walking out this journey with Jesus for the rest of your life. Yes, absolutely. And don't forget to come back for church next weekend. We're kicking off a brand new series. We have some guest speakers, Jimmy and Irene Rollins. It's gonna be a great time together. And if you're kind of new here, I just wanna let you know that whatever platform that you're watching this on right now, we actually have church there every single weekend. So we'd love to just welcome you back and for you to just be a part of our church family. So can't wait to see you there. <laughs> and again, we wanna say thank you for joining us. Hey, we hope you have an amazing rest of your week. And again, Happy Easter. Happy Easter.